You're watching LMCC, your community TV. I'm Jennifer Ray. Welcome to Got Money. Today we're going to be talking about the subject of divorce and I have a very special guest with me and the reason I chose her as my guest is we were discussing how to put the fun in divorce and her answer was the best answer that even describes her as an entire person and her whole philosophy and the way she works. And her answer was, I don't know if we can necessarily put fun but what I can give is hope. So with that, I want to introduce mediator and parenting consultant, Erin Kassebaum. So Erin, welcome to the program. Hi, thank you for having me, John. And why don't you tell the audience a little bit about your background? Um, well, so I uh, do mediation and parenting consulting. Um, and my background, I have a financial background, and then I also um, serve as a guardian ad litem for Hennepin County, and um, I do a lot of mediations over in Ramsey County, and I'm almost done with my graduate degree in marriage and family therapy. So, um, and then I do a lot of what we call ADR, which is alternative dispute resolution, um, and it's basically a way to um, get to a divorce settlement without having to go into the courts. And that's the ideal situation, is keep it out of the courts. It's very expensive and hopefully they can be reasonable. So one of the things I wanted to talk about was um, how it can be really emotional and how you mediate that when you're sitting down to talk to people. There's really, and correct me if I'm wrong, I perceive it uh, when I do the finance side for it, is there's two aspects. One is divvying up the assets and the finances, which might include spousal support, child support, things like that, and then really the harder part is the children. So can you discuss how you handle the whole picture and a little bit about what people need to look for with the children and what a parenting plan even is? Okay, um, well, so first of all, I wanna recognize that you know when you're going through a divorce, it's usually the worst time of people's lives. They're very overwhelmed with everything, understandably. Finances are very in question. Usually money's really, really tight. You're super worried about your kids because that's what everybody's worried about when you go through divorce because kids are usually struggling when their parents are going through divorce. So it is a super emotional, super stressful time of life. Um, but one of the things I always talk to my clients about is really when you're talking about the divorce process itself, we're really, what we're really working on is, is creating a business deal. It's kind of a business deal for getting through the divorce. So the emotional piece of divorce, which is huge and important and is really driving a lot of the decisions in the process really is not, it, the, the court doesn't make decisions based on people's emotions. With their, they're not really looking at who's done what wrong in, in the divorce. It's really a business deal. So if you can kind of go into your divorce as thinking about what's the best way we can get through this and so we can both move on with our lives and go on and be good, happy, healthy parents. That's the best way to get in, go, to head into the process from there. Even when, I mean, every divorce I work with, one person is kind of the person instigating the divorce. Always one person is the person who wants the divorce more and the other person is kind of forced to, to go along with it. And that's, that's always the case. And it's very, very difficult, especially for that person who maybe isn't as anxious to get to the, the divorce. But the reality is you're probably still gonna end up divorced. So really trying to put your head down, make some really good, smart decisions and trying to just get through the process as quickly as you possibly can. The longer the process takes and the more conflict there is during the process just drives up the cost and makes it take longer and everything we know about how kids do during divorce is the sooner you can resolve things, the better the kids are gonna do. The longer the conflict lasts, the worse kids are doing. So um, it's really, it, there's a lot of ways to get divorced and kids are gonna be okay. Um, that's one of the messages I always bring to my clients is that the vast majority of kids are okay after divorce and it's because their parents are able to, to do, do things right and make good decisions. Um, on behalf of, the, of their kids. So the more that parents can do that, the better kids are gonna do. So just reiterating there, it's doing it the right way, which is difficult to do 
for a lot of people, it's taking the emotion out of it. As you said, it's a business deal. Mm -hmm. And yet, oftentimes, there can still be an awful lot of emotion. So your choices are to lawyer up, get some lawyers. Each of you are going to be paying for an attorney. Um, and that's one thing I just wanted to uh, let people know here, too. When you do that, each attorney is doing the same work for each person. So when you can go to a mediator or a financial neutral, they're doing the work for both people as a neutral. So I, I like the mediation process from the standpoint that if you have an issue out of 10 and you can get nine of those resolved and you just have the one issue, maybe you do need to lawyer up for that one issue if it's that important to you. And then you can move forward with that one issue. But if you can resolve, if not 10, the other nine, it's just so much better. Now, I wanted you to share um, how unfortunate it is when people get really nitpicky. And you had an example of Valentine's cards. So if you just want to share that, oh, this well, is not necessarily the right way to manage things. Well, one of the things I usually tell clients is whatever conflict is about, well, and, and I don't tell clients that. I, I, I just relay the, what we actually know about how divorce impacts kids. And we everything we know is that conflict hurts kids, regardless of what the conflict is about. So if the conflict is about something super duper important, it's going to impact kids negatively. And if the conflict is about something really small and nitpicky, which is what I was talking to you about is some clients um, that I was looking at some previous court orders and they'd been in court. And one of the things that they were arguing about was who had to pay for the child's Valentine's, which we all know Valentine's cost about $2. So, um, you know, choosing, a, choosing to fight that kind of battle in court is really, um, well, it's first of all indicative that the fight is not about Valentine's in that case, right. but it's, you're really choosing to hurt your children or negatively impact your kids for something that's really not important. So one of the things, and there certainly are battles when you're co-parenting with somebody that it might be worth taking up if it's about safety or other really serious concerns, but for the most part, the more that, that folks can just let things go um, and just realize that that other parent is going to parent their way and you're going to parent your way and your kids are going to be okay, um, the better that, that the kids can certainly do because they're just, they're with mom when they're with mom and they're with dad when they're with dad and they're going to do fine. It's, it's the, all the, the negative negativity in between that can really negatively impact That doesn't kids. help anyone, not even the children, but it doesn't help either the mother or the father. Now, what is a parenting plan? Because when you have children, you have a parenting plan. What is a parenting plan? Okay, so that's one of the things I work on with um, all my clients that I see um, for divorce. And it's about a 10 page, I, I use a template that's about 10 pages long and it includes um, agreements around parenting from anything you can think of. So, you know, what time you want kids to go to bed, to, um, you know, safety stuff, babysitters, um, time with extended family, all of this, you know, anything you can think of. And of course, parenting time. So where kids are gonna be spending um, time, how kids are going to divide their time between parents. So that's like the big stuff, how the holidays and that kind of thing. Holidays are big. Holidays are really big. So um, we talk about pretty much all of that and try to get parents to be kind of on the same page with a lot of that. Um, and, you know, a lot of times parents are able to agree um, on a lot of those things. And that's, that's great for kids. If you're going into that divorce process and you already know, okay, well, we've already talked about that we're going to parent our kids this way. Um, it's good for parents. It gives parents a lot of safety and security and certainly it provides kids a lot of safety and security too. It does and then everyone's on the same page and that includes extracurricular activities. Like you said, it's 10 pages. So it covers more than we have the time allowed yep. here, but anything that has to do with the children, different school. How you're gonna pay for things, that's yes. a big piece of it because there is child Who's support. gonna be responsible for yep. what, yep. And even when, if when we're is. talking about extracurriculars, that's really a big expense that we see these days. Um, so talking about how you're gonna pay for that and how you're gonna decide what extracurriculars your kids are gonna be involved in because there's certainly situations where one parent doesn't agree with the other parent on what activities that the child right. should be doing, so. And um, religion, oftentimes there can yep. be issues and differences with religion or churches or yep. different kinds of faith-based information that they want them exposed to or attending. Yep, so we talk about all of that and, and try to work toward what a livable plan for how, um, 
how they can parent their kids going forward because we know that kids do the best when they have both parents in their lives and they get to spend good time with both parents and right. parents are focused on parenting instead of arguing. Fighting <laughs> with each other. Yeah. Now, and not everyone can do it amicably. Sometimes I've learned to never say never. Sometimes people just have so much emotion over it and and as you were saying before, there's one person that in general initiates it, is ready, and oftentimes it can take the other person, even though they it will eventually get through, just a lot longer than it will this person to kind of digest even information and think about it and agree to things, and so that people know that also is going to be part of it. Even though you're ready to move forward, it might not go as quickly as you would like because you do have another party that just isn't as um, eager, and so it's harder for them to digest a lot of the information and make the decisions. And they eventually will, it's just. It's just, yeah, most of the, the clients that I work with are both their mediation is a voluntary process, so that means both, parent, both people have to voluntarily engage in the process. Um, Whereas, you know, if one, if one person won't voluntarily engage, if that person who doesn't want the divorce won't, you know, kind of come to the table or engage in the process, then the person who wants the divorce is really forced to go out and get an attorney and file papers and start the process that way. Um, and, we, and we see that all the time. And that can be, I mean, and that can be a fairly seamless process if, um, you know, if you hire the right attorney and you um, kind of go into it with the right attitude, that can um, certainly work out fine too. Most of those cases, very, very few cases actually end up in a trial or really um, with a judge weighing in on any decisions. Most, Almost every divorce is settled without um, having to appear in the court for a judgment. And hopefully you don't have to end up because you, in a perfect world, you don't want the courts and the government making your decisions for you. So in a perfect world, everybody comes to the right conclusion, but sometimes that doesn't always work, which is why we have a very busy court system. Yep, and we've definitely seen in the last 20, 30 years, the, the family court is really trying, they've really moved toward alternative dispute resolution. So trying to get people to mediate. I mean, even if you hire attorneys and go through the court, the first thing you're um, asked encouraged to, do. to ask to do is to attend a mediation, attend some sort of um, ADR process because the courts really want people to decide their own divorce settlement because mm -hmm. people are best equipped to make their own decisions for their own lives. They know their kids, they know their finances, they know what's going on um, in their own lives and, and they're, they're well equipped to make those decision, decisions. And then I also wanted to touch base on um, I don't perceive it that way, but I think a lot, but I've never gone through a divorce. So a lot of people are ashamed, like it's a failure. And with all the divorce that's out there, I don't look at it that way. I just look at people who've, you know, grown up or grown apart, and now they're, they're just going to try a different path. And I think it's unfortunate, but I know that you have some thoughts on yeah, hopefully I think not feeling shameful, but it's just sometimes part of the process. Yeah, I don't, I don't think there's anybody that gets divorced that isn't, you know, nobody wants to have to tell their neighbors or their kids' teacher or anybody. Everybody seems to kind of be very timid about telling people, which I understand, but on the other hand, you know, half of people, the statistics are pretty clear that half of people get divorced. So it's, it's kind of ironic that we still kind of have this shame around, around it when it's such a common thing. Um, and I think I, I work with so many clients who do such a good job of getting divorced that I feel like they're, you know, th their kids are probably going to be better off because they're, they're going to do things. They are making really good decisions. They are doing the, the right by their kids versus living in a house where both people are miserable and, um, you know, struggling to raise kids in the same house. So I think there, there can be a lot of positives that come from um, from the process if, pe if people really do it right. Do you see any common denominators in that? Because you have had some clients who I've been really impressed with how eager they are to just be really rational and is that because you have? <laughs> I would like to take credit for that, but I cannot. You know, usually a lot of the, cl the, the clients that I see that are the, the wisest about getting divorced are the clients who have 
taken a long time to um, make the decision, have kind of arrived at the decision together one way or the, I mean, like I said, one person is, us is always the, kind of the instigator, but just kind of have seen the writing on the wall and accepted it. Two people who really are not out to punish each other through the process. I mean, everybody who goes through divorce is hurt and upset and understandably there's a lack of trust and all of, all of these things that get us to the divorce process. But um, the, pro the divorce process anymore, it's not like in the 70s or the 60s. It's not set up to punish one person or the other. It's really set up to cut your ties and, and move on with your life. So if, if you can come into the process with that attitude, like I always tell my clients, we're here to make a plan for how you're gonna live post-divorce. That includes financially and how you're gonna raise your kids. So it's all about making a plan. It's not about punish, it's not a punitive process mm -hmm. at all. Mm -hmm. and, and, that's, and that's the case even if you go through the courts. So um, it's really about um, making a plan. So that's one thing that I guess I want to reiterate here because oftentimes people will think, oh, so-and-so did this, that, the other thing. I'm going to get all the money, et cetera, et cetera. So I just wanted to have you discuss a little bit about it just doesn't work that way anymore. It may have worked that way, as you said, in the 60s and 70s, um, and how that came to come to fruition because I will get people in my office that think that they should get you know all of the house and all of the assets because their ex was a not a very nice kind wonderful family person yeah so yeah and that's and that's um i think that's just that's like a holdover from the 70s or something that there's still this belief that the the poorly behaving spouse is going to be somehow punished through the process either financially or less time with the kids or whatever else and that's just not I mean, obviously, when it comes to parenting, there can be some difficult parent, you know, some challenges to mm -hmm. overcome, and that can certainly affect parenting time and that kind of thing. But generally, you know, it, it, it's, it, and even there, we're not, that's not a punitive thing to, to one parent or the other. That's really looking out for what's best for the children. Right. Um, and as far as financially goes, um, it, it, that's not really the way that the process works. It's not about punishment. It's about, like I said, making a plan and trying to do what's fair um, and making sure both people can pay their bills and, and afford to live after, yeah. after divorce. And that is a tough part because, um, you know, that's what I do. I'm going to try to catalog all the assets and look at what has tax ramifications, et cetera. And oftentimes couples will come in and they haven't been able to live off of that income on one household. Now they've got two. So sometimes there's some unrealistic expectations there that if people can look at those things in black and white it can help them make some better decisions. Mm -hmm. Yep and I work with couples a lot who you know maybe one person's sure that they really want to stay in the house but once you start looking at stuff you might realize oh well really That's maybe expensive. neither one of us can afford to stay in the house and in you know I, I never feel like I have to break that news I feel like we look at numbers and that just is what <laughs> what the result of the conversation yeah. is but um, yeah, I, my, I always say the ideal divorce would be one where you could double your money and clone your kids because <laughs> then you could both go on and have the same amount of money and the same parenting time with your kids. But unfortunately, that's not the, the world we live in. So, yeah, isn't that true? <laughs> well, it is a way to make the process the most palatable, the most equitable, and without having to take you both through the ringer emotionally. Uh, mentally and financially. So if you or somebody you know is thinking about divorce, mediation is a good way to start. So thank you, Erin, so much Jen. for coming into the program. Thank I you so much. It. Thanks so much for watching. And I just want to end with letting you know that this time of the year, our backyard friends, birds, squirrels, chippies, deer, all would like a little drink of water. And at this time, we have water that is frozen and no snow. So if you can, and you can plug in one of those heaters, you can get them at Menards, Fleet Farm, and feel free for at least, we feed all year round water, whether it be unheated or not, but at least over the next couple months till the snow comes, your backyard friends will very much appreciate it. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Jennifer Ray. Until next time, Godspeed.